everybody um welcome back to the channel so <sighs> i've been trying to find my glasses all morning because i feel like i would feel better protected having my glasses on but i can't find them i'm pretty sure i left them at the office anyway uh i want to try and do this video in one take and get it over with um but if you have been following social media in South Africa for a couple of days, uh, JubeJube was trending. JubeJube is a media personality in the country. And he was trending for like a little bit of a snippet that went up on MacG's um, social profiles that he was going to be on MacG's show. And he trended for really according to me all of the wrong reasons um but that's a story for another day um and yesterday uh with everything that was said by jupe jupe on my G show yesterday amanda dupont another media personality another celebrity in the country came out and said that um jupe jupe had violated her for the term of using words that are appropriate enough for YouTube. She came out and she said YouTube violated her for two years. And something about that video, that Insta Live that she did, triggered me in more ways than one. Now you need to understand, I live in South Africa. We are faced with gender-based violence cases every single day we are hearing about women who have been killed by their partners right now there's a case of nosikelo uh, from pe whose partner killed her and dismembered her and all of that there's just something with regards to gbv every single day in this country i can't even look at the lens uh but something in what Amanda Dupont said, Dupont said, that triggered me immensely. I think it opened up something that I had lay dormant for years. And I think I'd taken it and I put it in a little Pandora's box and I locked it away. And didn't ever want to address it. And it was through some of what she said that I feel for me uh, brought it all back. And I remember when I saw that Insta Live, just before that Insta Live, I'd seen the tweets where she had said Jupe Jupe had violated her for two years. And uh, I wasn't so much shocked. I was talking to my friend on the phone and we were talking about it. But even saying that, I was still talking about it properly like there was there was no issue right and then um, I watched her insta live firstly I'm really sorry to uh, Amanda Dupont and all the other women who have now recently come out for what Chup Chup has done to them secondly I applaud her grace and her spirit in what she said in her insta live i applaud to see what a wonderful woman she has become and her strength through all of it uh and thirdly i thank her because had it not been for her insta live i wouldn't be sitting here doing this video right now i look so weird my hair's a mess i'm just so uh, this is gonna disturb me sorry so then i woke up this morning and i woke up to my sister's video and i lost it i lost it i lost it for my sister and i lost it for myself and i lost it and then that's when i felt like it's time to use my platform for all the good that I use my platform for, but it's also time to use my platform to speak 
and share my truth and own it and put it out there so that it just doesn't control me anymore so that I don't have to hide it away in a box and not think about it anymore so that's why we're here today hang on two seconds there's two incidences that have happened to me that I've never shared with anyone outside my family members uh, one of which happened when I was 17 and the other happened when I was 28. Something in what Amanda said yesterday. I remember hearing her say that she had continued on with her life even after what Chup Chup had done to her because she just blocked it out. And for me, this is the part where I broke down because I remembered how much I had blocked out. I completely blocked it out. I'd moved on with my life. I told myself that it's fine. It happened then. It's fine. I never even thought about it. Even with all the cases of gender-based violence that have happened in this country, that have torn this country apart, I would briefly think about it, but it never consumed me the way that it did yesterday. I have my earphones, I have my headphones here because I was listening to something to try and calm me down before doing this video. Now they feel like a little bit of a hug, so I'm keeping them here. I hope they're not too distracting. So when I was 17, a cousin of mine would always visit uh, my mother's house and he introduced me to this one friend of his and I liked the guy and I thought that he was cute and whatever I'm gonna try and do this as fast as possible because I know I tend to just go on and on and eventually you know every time he would go visit his friend who lived in my area as well I would go with him so eventually I figured out where he lived and when my cousin would go back to his home after the holidays and all of that, I would visit this friend. And I remember asking my cousin, saying to him that, would you have a problem if so-and-so uh, and I like got into a relationship? And he would always say, no, no, why? No. So I decided to defy his wishes. And I started sneaking around to go and visit him. I started hanging out. Initially, he was just so sweet. And this is the first time that I'm talking about this outside of my family members knowing. So, I'm just going to have... I hope you guys can bear with me because I'm a crybaby. If you think my sister's a crybaby, she ain't. <laughs> so, I would go and visit him a couple of times. And, uh, you know, the first couple of times, it was always fun. You know, we'd have a good time. He lived in his parents' house. Um, they, they also lived with his uncle and all of that. So it was always a good time. Until one day, I went. And he was alone when I got to his house. He was alone at home. And I can't even look at the screen. <laughs> the lens rather he was alone at home came in as any other normal day we chilled in the lounge um and we started making out as teenagers typically do and then at some point he wanted to move the party to his bedroom and i was okay with it because i thought oh well all we ever do really is just make out it's not it's not going to be a big deal of course, it continued. Uh, it was a making out in the bedroom. Um, we got onto the bed, making out there. And um, all I remember, because it was so long ago, the real pieces that stick out to me was that I remember him starting to feel very heavy on my body so you know when someone is on top of you and in moments of intimacy and whatever they're on top of you but they don't feel extremely heavy 
this is the one part that I do remember that he was it just he just became so heavy on me and that's when I started to struggle to shift and move around and all of that and uh, I remember just then at this point saying okay stop I'm feeling uncomfortable what 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 and uh, he didn't so then at this point it became a full-blown struggle at this point I was fighting I was really fighting and I was screaming and shouting And I remember at some point I screamed and I shouted and he, was, he still just felt really heavy on me. Forcefully kissing, this pulling at, tugging at my clothes, trying to remove my... Anyway, that's a little bit TMI. I remember at some point I struggled so much that I tried to wiggle out from under him. And this is the point where we fell. Um, and again, I remember the bed was here and the wall was here. And I remember when he fell, he fell on top of me. And when he fell on top of me, he continued, pressed me down. Can you imagine how strong somebody must be when they press you down with this part of their arm? They press it down across you here. And the other hand is in places where it should be. At that time, I was a virgin. And at that time, had it not been for his uncle walking in to the yard whistling, I don't know what would have happened. Because at that point he was already, his hand was where it shouldn't have been and it was painful and tugging and all of that and he was trying to get my jeans off because that's all I ever wore around that time. I just wore really tight jeans because I thought they were cute. And he would just, try and tug and tug and tug and it was painful and it felt like it was too much and uh i kept on screaming and shouting and pleading at some point i remember saying to him okay it's fine we can do it just let me you know let, let me just recuperate eating his lungies and whatever let me just try and figure it out and i think he knew that uh, -uh if if he got up from here I was that I was gonna bolt, so he continued to do what he did. I silenced this phone. Why is it? Oh, I didn't. Had it not been for the uncle coming in and hearing my screams and hearing me shouting and the uncle saying, the, it's funny, another thing that I remember is that the wall, the bed was here and the wall was here and there was an ironing board just here. And I remember the struggle was so rough to get him out from on top of me to get out that the ironing board fell. So when it fell, it hit the bed and it was like literally on top of him. It was sitting at an angle like this. I keep remembering that memory. I keep going back to that. And I remember... After that, the, 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 the uncle walked in and he heard my screams and then the uncle started shouting like, stop what you're doing, stop what you're doing, because he had locked the door into the house and all of that. Had it not been for the grace of God and the uncle, I really don't know where I would be. I really don't know if I would have a different story to tell, a worse one. Uh, but I remember he, he got up from me and he opened the door and he opened, he tried to go off and talk to his uncle or whatever. When he opened the door, I ran out and I remember running home, just crying, just running and running home and crying. And I got home. I didn't tell my mom for about a week or two. I didn't tell my mom or my cousin anything. And then at some point I did. 
I told them and they lost their shits and my mom wanted to go over to his house and all of that and I begged and I pleaded and I said it's fine I'm not talking to him anymore it's fine and it's funny I remember in the times that I would go to visit him before that fateful day he would like host parties at his house and all of that and uh, friends would come over and I remember at some point when Amanda DuPont said that he would always try to have sex with her when her, when there were people around. I remember how he would always try and drag me into his bedroom, lock the door, and then I would always try and make out with me and all of that. And I would always say, there's people here. We can't do that. There's people here. Somehow in those instances, I got lucky, I guess. Because he would just stop. Um... The second incident, I was 28, and I was in a relationship with somebody, and I remember everything was fine. He, he was great. For a long time, he was great, and I remember at some point, uh, we were sleeping, and it was at night, and a message came on through to my phone on WhatsApp, and the message came in, and it said, hey, babe. Something like that. some basic like that, right? I didn't see this message. And at the time, I hadn't enabled my WhatsApp to hide messages like that. Whereas now, you can just have the, the, the WhatsApp notification come in, right? So at that point, you, you could see who the message was from. And you could see what it said. Hey, babe, right? Basic. But the guy, it was a guy. And the message came in at, I think, around 11 at night. I was sleeping. I woke up in the morning. I believe he saw it. He saw that message when the, when the phone kind of, you know, uh, lit up. He saw the message and he went to the bathroom. And then he went back to bed. In the morning we woke up getting ready for work. And I remember he was really cold that morning and I, I was wondering to myself what is it what's going on right and uh all i remember was him grabbing me by the arms and smashing me into the wall and shouting and at that whole time just grabbing me and literally I bruise really easily I think it's a thing because my sister does as well but you just grabbing me by the arms and shoved me into the wall and just screaming and shouting who is that person and I'm trying to explain that it's a friend of mine we went to school together there's a three hour time difference between where he is and where I am and I tried to explain it and I just remember being shoved so hard that my back, what hurt me the most was that that one incident happened and it, it changed, it changed how I saw him. I was frightened of him going forward. I was so scared, but I stayed with him for a little bit longer after that, even though the relationship did disintegrate. But what hurts me the most is that a few days after that incident happened, my aunt came over to visit me. And I remember going into my bathroom to take a bath and I closed the door to come to the bathroom, I closed it, which I typically don't do. I always keep the, the door open, whether I'm doing a wee-wee or whether I'm bathing, whatever. And I remember my aunt opening the door and she saw me in the tub and she saw a bruise on my back and she saw bruises on my arms. And I remember for the remainder of that time in that relationship, I was just afraid. Most of the time, I was just scared and afraid. <laughs> but I stayed. So please don't ask women, why do they stay? 
it's 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 a whole mental chemical thing that they don't even know how to explain do not ask them why they stay that's rude anyway i remember after that there were other incidences where he would just grab at my arm if we were having a fight or he would be like really loud and bang doors and 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 I, I just all i remember was just really being scared but i loved him and i wanted to stay with him and you know he would shout and scream oh one of the reasons why I completely shut down if I'm fighting with somebody and they start shouting and screaming, whether it can be a friend, a sister, a parent or whatever, if they start shouting and screaming, I completely turn into my shell and I do not know how to respond and whatever. And I think it's largely based on what happened in that particular relationship where we would constantly fight. And he would frighten me with how he would charge at me and then he would stop and then he ah uh, fuck. <sighs> okay, that is my story of my gender-based violence experiences. And when I watched my sister's video today. It's not only the person who's being abused that struggles because as Nalidi's sister, I knew a lot of what was going on. She would tell me, I would see it. And initially I would fight her all the time to say, I am going to tell your parents, let's go to the police. Let's do this, this. And she would beg me she would beg and plead with me at some point you know we'd even get into fights about it because I would want to do what I wanted to do and she didn't want me to do it she would beg and plead and she'd scream and shout and we'd end up getting into a fight because of all the things that that man had done to my sister the amount of times that I would be called to the house it's not only hard on the person who is being abused. It's not only hard on them, even as a family member who knows what's going on, but you can't say anything because they've begged you not to say anything is hard too. It's hard too. And I feel like that's also another form of gender-based violence because as a woman, who's watching my sister go through what she's going through and being silenced for the sake of a man. <sighs> Maybe I'll talk more on that at a later stage, but I wanted to do this video so that I could use my platform to speak out on this and to say that enough is enough. And to thank Amanda Dupont and also to tell her and Kelly and Mashchaba and every other woman who has spoken out on gender-based violence that we believe you. Because the reality is, even though there have been cases of whatever, but people, normal Good people don't just randomly lie about things like this. They don't. They don't lie about things like this. So don't, don't nullify someone's experience and say that, no, but why didn't they report it sooner? Why didn't they, whatever. You just, if you haven't experienced it, you know nothing about it, okay? You know nothing that goes into the fact that you can't say anything because you're afraid. You can't say anything because you feel like you, you're going you're gonna to make it worse. That person's going to come and find you and do all these things. You can't say anything. And you can, women can be in love with their abusers. It happens. I'm sorry. 
to any one of you watching this video who has experienced any form of gender-based violence or sexual harassment or just catcalling every in every form it could be i am sorry that you've had to go through any of that speak up speak out the only way we can do this is if we talk about it the only way this can be brought to the forefront so that there are laws that come into place especially in this particular country that fight for women is if we speak about it so if you have a story share your story with me if you don't want to share it publicly send me an email send me a dm it's fine but just know that i stand with you and i believe you that's it